So that's why we lose a lot of talent. So, you know, if you look at all these test sides around the world, uh, you know, you have David Pocock, you have uh, Carl Gordon, Wallabies, they're always in Barbon to grow up here. Uh, Beast, obviously. Beast is, is a Barbon. You got, we have maybe about 15 guys playing the English Premiership. Um, you know, and, and guys that play for Scotland uh, or that are playing for Scotland. Um, we have uh, the Japanese uh, winger, Machishima. He's half yep. Barbon. You know, so you, you, you have all these like guys that are not just decent rugby players but they were considered the best in, the, in their positions and 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 so it, it it follows that trend where after high school they have to go outside to get a good education and and, and get the facilities because we don't have a professional league in so mm-hmm. so the ones that remain behind play club league but it's not you know it's not to the standard where it can nature a, a professional athlete I think the minute I stepped on a practice field for rugby. The calling happened. An eight-year plan to be on the team. And I was in it within two years. Don't wait until you are a pro to be a pro. Right? And I walk around with a rugby ball sometimes and they're like, what is this child on? I mean, it looks like it was a heavy. Yeah. It's up. It's not up. You know, that's the first time I played like professional. I'm making rugby money. How can I make money outside of it? And there's two Scottish guys and they said, oh, you're, um, you're here for the movie. That rugby is a game for all shapes and sizes, all cultural um, aspects. And he looked at me and he says, you guys are awesome. Grow rugby. Grow rugby. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Grow Rugby Show. My name is Gift Gift Time Ibelu, and this is the show where we speak to people about the opportunities that they have found, created, or taken advantage of via rugby. Y'all, I have to apologize because I keep thinking that I can be consistent, and it's I'm not, and so that is on me. All right. I appreciate that you for taking the time to continue to listen because I have not been doing my job. We got a lot going on. One of the biggest things that we have going on is that we announced the new location for the HBCU Rugby Classic and Music Festival for 2023, which will be taking place in Washington, D.C., hosted at Howard University, one of the premier HBCUs. In the country, that's out of 119 HBCUs. Let it be known, all right? Let it be known. We're about to go wild with it. And then, of course, the other half of it, we've been working on Gift Time Media and Productions Agency. And right now, we're actually working a deal where we are creating new, amazing hype and highlight videos for individual people. Y'all, like, you, you need to get your highlight. Like, we, we good at this. All right, we are good at this, and you want to be able to get one, yo, just go check out the website, gifttimeproductions.com slash highlights, and go and sign up to be able to get your highlight video done off of what you've done for this summer, what you've done over the year. If you're a team, yo, you need an introduction into your, into your team. When people look you up, they need to know, oh my gosh, this is who we're going for, all right? This is the team we're going for. Let me go get some videos done. And don't just put clips together against a background music. Like, when it doesn't sync and it's just, like, actions but they don't match, like, you don't want that. This is what we do. We make sure that we give you works of art that create real feelings. So definitely check it out, gifttimeproductions.com slash uh, uh, highlights, H-I-G-H-L-I-G-H-T-S, if you didn't know how to spell it before. But... Outside of that, yo, it's been busy. We've been working on trying to keep everything together. I, it's a lot happening, but you know what? We got a good few weeks of guests coming up. So I got something for you, especially as the school year is about to begin. It's about to be very, very real. I'm excited as I don't know what. And today, we have an amazing guest for you today. This man has been in the rugby community, changing the game from the ground up. He is the founder of Kiro Sports. He is best known for his work with the Beast Foundation, working alongside his friend Tendai Mitunwari, a.k.a. the Beast out of the Springboks, Zimbabwe. Um, He is the co-founder of ASTAT. 
He is working with Rock Nation. He's worked with Super League. He's worked with national teams. And, man, this man has been bringing it forever straight out of Zimbabwe by way of New Jersey. I want to introduce Kisechi Chiringenji. Man, this was somebody who I've been wanting to talk to for years. I've been following for years. One of the people that I emulate in wanting to be in sports marketing and hope I can get to his level. Uh, guys, you guys are going to enjoy this. We talked about so much from his upbringing all the way through to where he is going in terms of tech and in terms of uh, rugby development and what is happening across the board, this was a dream come true, uh, like I said, conversation for me. So without further ado, I don't want to hold anything back. We'll introduce you to Kisechi, cheering Ganji. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another great episode of Grow Rugby. My name is Gift Gift Tommy Bailo, and of course, we got another V I Super I, very very I in per P per you know, V I I I I P up in here. Sechi cheering Gedji. Did I get it right? You got it, bro. You got Man, it. Man, let's go. Let's go. Look, <laughs> I'm very excited about this one because. Uh, I, I, I look, I'm going to let you know this. So whenever I had been starting to do uh, rugby more and more, uh, more in the media space, and it was actually a little bit before the Rugby World Cup, I was looking up sports marketers uh, around because I wanted to get to understand the horizon. And your name came up actually first. I think I, I think I knew of you around 2018 as from uh, Cairo Sports. And then... All of a sudden, I just kept seeing that we had a lot of mutual people. Uh, and it was just like, yo, what's happening? And, I, you know, we connected on LinkedIn. But I've been really impressed with what you've been doing uh, in, in, in the U.S. and in Zimbabwe, South Africa, Zimbabwe and South Africa simultaneously. So uh, I didn't say it beforehand because, you know, you got to save it for the pod. But <laughs> it was like I, I've, I've really been impressed. So. Kisech, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the show. No, thank you for having me, Gift. I'm a big fan, like I said, of your show. I'm a big fan of the way you are pushing the game. The big fan of how you, you know, you promote the game even on LinkedIn and stuff. And I'm very excited to talk to you today. Man, thank you so much. Well, look, brother, I, I, you know, I, I always tell people right off the bat, look, I, I love a good superhero origin story. And uh, uh, yeah. right now you're going to be the superhero. So I want to say, how did you get started with rugby? Whew, that's uh, so that started in uh, high school. I'm a first year freshman, freshman year high school. I was kind of forced into it as a child kid and all that. So if you if if you understand the, the sort of school structure in Zimbabwe, it's yeah, there's a there's a bit of a seniority thing going on where the seniors are sort right. of like they rule schools and 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 all the youngsters kind of have to respect them. There's this whole respect situation going on. So I got to school and in my second week all the seniors were like um, you can't go and play hockey. I wanted to play hockey for some reason. I field hockey. We're talking about field hockey, uh, not like uh, ice hockey. Field hockey, yeah. Yeah, we don't have no ice in Zimbabwe, so yeah, <laughs> definitely field hockey. So, so I, you know, so I, um, I'm getting ready to go to the hockey field and the the seniors, uh, you know, say, you know, no, you're not going to play hockey, you're going to play rugby. And <laughs> Like no, I'm not. I'm not gonna play rugby. I don't want to get injured. I don't want to get hurt. Uh, they're like, you have no choice. So, but I long story short, I had no choice. I was forced to go there, but I just quickly fell in love with it, just like a lot of us do. Of course, and it just became life, man. My life has just revolved around rugby. Everything I sort of do kind of flows from rugby. Um, and, and it's been, a, it's been a blessing, man. It's been a blessing, man. That's awesome. And you know, it, it, it's interesting because, you know, 
Zimbabwe, South Africa, Zimbabwe, I, I say both because, you know, people know South Africa and then remember Zimbabwe afterwards. So I'm going to say both, but I'm giving it to Zimbabwe. But, yeah. you know, within that region, we're, especially in, you know, in the States, everybody is um, all about like whenever you're starting rugby, starting at, at the youngest age and the culture of it in, in these areas. Um, you know, for me, I looked at it and I'm like, is rugby the biggest sport or how, or how does one, uh, I guess, initially enter into it? So for you, obviously the, the senior boys, they, they brought you in, but the culture of rugby in your area, uh, how significant was it in comparison to maybe other sports? Yeah. So most kids start in elementary school, you know, and they start in what we call primary school. Right. And so they start a lot younger than I did. I just didn't get into it at that age for some reason. Um, but yeah, it is a huge influence. And, and for those, maybe your listeners, you know, Zimbabwe is right next to, to South Africa. It's an hour flight. And, but the, the culture is much bigger in South Africa. Obviously, they're the current world champions. And it's a big sport out there. In Zimbabwe, it's a big sport in all the sort of the private schools and all mostly you know some of the i'd say 80 percent of the high schools rugby is like the main sport so it's it's like when i'm talking to americans i kind of compared a little bit to how high school football is in texas oh wow uh, it's a, yeah it's a little bit like that within the, the high school systems you get like a huge crowd in games like last week i was at a a, 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 a local school school game and there was a lot of people there, you know, it's just, just a good atmosphere. And it's it, a lot of people like enjoy coming to, to watch it on the weekend. So there's a huge culture of it in Zimbabwe and in South Africa. See, I, I like that. And it, it's good to know because i had always had this theory where rugby's one of rugby's biggest issues is that it's not a number one sport in enough places. So like in the Oceania area, Tonga, Samoa, uh fiji number one new zealand number one but then whenever you come into australia south africa i i always made the assumption that you know it lands somewhere between three and six as opposed to one and three um because you have like cricket soccer um netball or you know basketball australia obviously has afl rugby league has overpassed it you know uh, yeah. uh such like that so to understand exactly how the sport progresses through the world, especially in being in places that dominate, I always get interested to see how the actual local population uh, interacts with the sport. Yeah, I mean, you're quite right. So in South Africa, I'd say it's probably second to soccer. Mm -hmm. And in Zimbabwe, it's, you know, it's, it's also maybe second to soccer. Right. Um, but if you go to high schools, it's the number one sport. Really? That's why that's why I gave you that comparison with you know Texas high school football. But yeah, so definitely in high schools, rugby is like the main sport, and that's what dominates it. South Africa is even worse than Zen. Like you get it's ridiculous. They have their own channel. They like it's it's amazing to see. And some of my best years were playing school play rugby. And I would, if you were to give me an option, I would go and do my last two years of high school all over again. That's what's up. Last, like, yeah. is is it do you, is it one of those situations where you're just like, not only do I get to see the best of the best and get to push a competition, but um, but I get to actually experience almost like its own international level of. Uh, rugby, but I just get to have it more localized because everybody's so uh, engaged in that high school moment. So, so what are the questions? Sorry, I missed it. Oh, so yeah, I was saying like the the feeling like as you as a player in that moment, does it almost yes. feel like you're playing at an international level? Uh, except for obviously it's localized, but it's like yo, I have all the hype. Like I got the stadiums full, the energies in the air, the crispiness. And it's like, I get to see these guys who some are going to be some of the best in the world and some, you know, are going to go their own way. But I get a chance to be in that circle because it is 
it is congregated or built up at the most at that at that high school moment, that secondary school moment. It it it, it definitely does, man. It definitely does. I I'll tell you, like in my school, it was compulsory for every every student to go and support the first team play. Wow. So you know, so you have the whole school is kind of forced to do it, but they're not forced because they want to be there. It's the event where you want to be there. Everyone wants to be there, right? So it certainly feels like the atmosphere is, is special because these are people that you're with like 24-7 because we're mostly in boarding schools, right? So we, I was at a boarding school, so I was with these guys probably oh, more than my parents, right? Like, right. <laughs> or my family. So, <laughs> And then you get out there every Saturday, you're playing a big game and the whole school is there to support and then all the parents are there, and all, everyone out of town comes in to watch. It, it's a special feeling. So it's definitely, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to say how it feels to play like tier one international, uh, but I think it, it, it quite matches it. You know, some of my friends who play tier one international games uh, certainly say that schoolboy rugby was some of their you know, most precious times in Zim and in South Africa. So, man, I love that. I love yeah. that. So what happens next after that? So, you know, obviously here, I mean, there's the, the, the individual clubs, obviously, and then you most people go into the collegiate area and then continue on. Is the, but I, is the system similar within Zimbabwe um, with, with how people now move after, after our secondary school? Yeah, it's pretty much similar. So, Zimbabwe, it's a little, it's a little different because a lot of people, if they can afford it, leave for college or university elsewhere. They go to South Africa, they go to, to, to the UK, they go to the United States, they go to Australia and Canada. Those are right. the sort of the common uh, landing spots. Um, so that's why we lose a lot of talent. So you know, if you look at all these test sites around the world. Uh, you know, you have David Pocock, you have uh, Kyle Godwin, Wallabies, they're all Zimbabweans who grew up here. Uh, oh. Beast, obviously. Beast is, is Zimbabwean. You got, we have maybe about 15 guys playing the English Premiership, um, you know, and, and guys that play for Scotland uh, or that are playing for Scotland. Um, we have uh, the Japanese uh, winger, Machishima. He's half yep. Zimbabwean. You know, so you, you you have all these like guys that are not just decent rugby players, but they were considered the best in, the, in their positions, and 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 so it it follows that trend where after high school they have to go outside to get a good education and 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 get the facilities because we don't have a professional league in Zim. So mm -hmm. the ones that remain behind play club league, but it's not. You know, it's not to the standard where it can nature a, a professional athlete. So you always find find that we lose that talent to other countries. So it kind of f falls into that same problem that uh, like Tonga, Fiji, Samoa fall into. Yep. The brain drain occurs very quickly just because size and opportunity is limited. Yeah, it's similar, but I would say that those countries at least like keep churning out talent, right? So they'll have a decent national team because the guys that don't make, make the All Blacks or the Wallabies like still come back and play for Tonga or Fiji and make them a top 15 playing nation in the world still. Whereas Zimbabwe, like we're already a small population and we not everyone plays rugby. So the ones that do play rugby and are good at it get lost in the system to other countries or they stop playing altogether. And then our national team sort of suffers. So it, it is similar, but uh, a little different in the fact that Fiji and Samoa do a good job of sort of then getting the ones that don't make it to the tier one side. Well, I mean, they, they're also tier one, but the very top sides. I feel that. I feel that. So for you, you know, whenever you got done playing, like, yeah. did you end up going overseas for college or did you end up staying? Yeah, so I, I I left when I was nineteen. I went to uh, uh, I went to the UK uh, yeah. to 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 study, 
and I was playing rugby there, um, just trying to make it there, didn't work out, and um, just sort of then started playing in the sort of semi-pro leagues um, in uh, National 1, National 2, and then eventually stopped um, and then moved into the space that I'm in now, which is sports marketing, which is something that you you do as well. So, um, oh, yeah. So yeah I, 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 we're building. We're building the story over here. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Yeah. So, so that's, that was pretty much my journey. Yeah. yeah. You know, w- when you're time in the UK, obviously, um, what did you think added for you in that one? Versus what you were getting, obviously, in Zimbabwe. But again, obviously, different ages, so you have those maturity things. But uh, again, you're within a culture that knows rugby, that experiences rugby very consistently. So whenever you went to the UK and and took that experience level, and I'm, you know, from, you know, eyes view, the style of rugby played, at least from a, a core standpoint, um, this, uh, from a surface standpoint, that's played in England feels different than the perspective of, of rugby played in Zimbabwe. What did you feel like you took both on and off the pitch whenever you went to the UK and started playing a little bit up there? I think the main difference for me was just how specially, uh, how specialized some of the coaching was. Uh, in Zimbabwe, I didn't really get anyone. I, I was playing hooker, front row. Uh, I didn't have a specialist like throwing coach. I didn't have a, a specialist scrummaging coach. Um, and when I got there, those are some of the elements that got improved really quickly because I had uh, just these guys that focused on those skill positions. Um, that was one big change, I think. Uh, but what also like, sort of hit me hard was just the, the culture shock. It was, it was cold. Yeah. Now, it's not a, now, Shit, now, it's I not a, Yeah. <laughs> Then and, and I was not, uh, when I when I then moved to the states, I then found out that the United Kingdom is not as cold, but <laughs> it rain, it rains all the time, so it was gloomy, right? So right, that was. I feel like that's the mixture there. Yeah. Like it, it, you feel yeah. your coldness more because of the fact that you don't get enough sun, as opposed right. to like here, like you get that below zero, which I I don't know how anybody lives in that. I I don't I don't get it. But right. at least there's like some sun that goes along with it for a little bit where you're just like, okay, maybe, maybe I can feel a little bit of energy here as I shake myself back to warmth. <laughs> right, right, right. And that, that was exactly it. So, uh, but yeah, man, I, I had a good time there. Um, uh, didn't feel like I was going to uh, live there the rest of my life. Yeah. But I spent my 20s, most of my 20s there and, and then I moved back home to Zim. Nice, nice. So, you know, again, in, as as you're taking in that and you come back home, like this is where it becomes very interesting and where it goes into sports market because I'm, I'm about to sit on this one for a minute. So, you know, bear with me. All right. We, we, we going in. We going in because I, I love what has been going on, because in, in reality, I, I feel like it's it's not as it's very rare within the rugby community from my experience and perspective not just in the u.s but watching it as a global entity outside of the union what was it that caught your attention uh about entering into the sports marketing arena especially with rugby um you know for uh, before you answer i know for me we've always i've always been attached to sports since i was a kid whether playing football american football or whenever it rose into uh, rugby or baseball, soccer, you know, there's always that attachment there um, for all time. But whenever, but when it came to with rugby, there's for me, there was like a hole that I could see yeah. in it. And it was like, I don't know why this hole hasn't really been filled, but I feel like there's, there's something here with it. And I, th- I think, especially, I'm going to say as Africans, uh, there is a notorious, um, uh, 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 characteristic that we share, um, and, and, and I know, especially with Nigerians, uh, that the impossible seems possible because of the fact that everything can be very, we're used to there being a pushback in some way, shape, or form. So, this is a long way of me going back saying, What was it that initially caught your eyes about wanting to do sports marketing, uh, when you got back to Zimbabwe? 
Well, I think initially, so I, I went to school and I did sport business management. Um, so that's that's that was my major. Right. Initially, I wanted to be an agent. And then I quickly sort of figured out that it's probably not for me. Uh, it doesn't, it didn't stick with my personality in terms of you got to be ruthless. You got to be, um, and they do a fantastic job for the athlete. They look out for the athlete. So right. I, I probably figured out that, that that space wasn't for me. And but I like the the idea of promoting the game and 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 propelling it to to new heights. And I'm a big football fan as well. And I just you know sort of saw what the NFL was doing and college football was doing. Right. And I'm like, you know, I, I, why doesn't rugby like sort of like push the product the way uh, you know the American uh, sporting landscape does. So that that was part of the motivation on my end, and and some of the things that we then did in our journey was inspired by sort of what the NFL is doing, uh, you know, taking games to London, and obviously this year they're taking games to Germany, and they already sold out that kind of stuff. So. Uh, so part of the journey was inspired by that in terms of just bringing uh, some of the innovation that's happening in other sport codes and other leagues into an experiment in the, in, in, in the rugby space. And that's that's an ongoing journey. It's not something that, uh, because our systems are sort of traditional and, you know, uh, certain people like this sport as it is. They, they say that they like the values and they want to keep them that way. So... Um, it's a little harder to, it's going to take a bit more time to change everyone's mindset and shift sort of the culture to where you need to shift it to. So it's, it's just a work in progress. Yeah. No, I, 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 <laughs> I agree with you in the fullest way <laughs> uh, when it yeah. comes to that. You know, you know what's up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, it, and it's interesting because the, the, I find it to be both its strength and its weakness. Um, yeah. Particularly, you know, traditionalism has its place I, I, where it creates a, at least, you know, a core standard of what you want to expect from um, a, what you want to expect from a sport. It, it, it creates at least something to be able to, as a guiding light. But whenever it comes into that point where it's like, you don't want to change or adjust despite the fact that the times have now moved past certain elements of it, uh, whether from just a core, from a point of just how it's presented language wise to like something even as minute as how the uh, presentate on field presentation can be. I've, I've yeah. found it very interesting. The mindset that goes with rugby people, rugby community people on the, the traditional element of, of, of rugby um, for you, you know, when you got started, did you work with an organization or were you just like, look, I'm going to go independent and, you know, utilize my, my friends and family and tap into it or. Um, maybe just to, 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 uh, uh, back a little bit. So obviously yeah. I looked back at Zim and I didn't see anyone in that space. So that motivated and then coming back to your question motivated me to start my own company, which is Cairo Sports. And and started that in, in the UK, but I wasn't getting a lot of traction because just the UK is a is a small field shop. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's just hard to penetrate into. Uh didn't have the context to be able to make any sort of real impact. Um so when I moved back home, just started building on on just developing that business model um and making it better few bumps along the way, but then we started getting a, a few breaks here and there. 2014, uh, brought in John Mitchell, who's the, uh, the ex-England coach and ex-All Black coach. He's coaching Japan now and is, is with Wasps, a really good friend of mine. So mm -hmm. we, did, we did an event around sports marketing uh, in Zem. So that was sort of our first, we, uh, first sort of real foray into, into the sports marketing landscape because I had to go to brands and sort of get them to come and uh, sponsor the event and, and then obviously to pay for uh, the thing that we were doing and then engage the, the fan base to be able to uh, to interact with, with the product. So that was sort of our first thing and then we would then start building it off from there. Man, dude, I, I, I love it. 
Because I know for me, it, it's it's taken ironically a long time to get to the point of doing the sports marketing because again, it, it was the same thing. It was like I see this space, I see yeah. that it was open, but and and then it goes like I don't understand why nobody has really fully filled it. Which you know, you always kind of step back and you're like, what am I missing in this, right? Yeah. So I, I always talk about like where I started from and, and it was just like, I started it as initially a blog, then it became video, then streaming and then event creation. And, but all of yeah. it was like, you're every one of these pieces have their own unique, you know, uh, uh, job and purpose, yeah. but they all, there's always something that relies more on the other. So like yeah. in doing the streaming, it was like, Oh man, I, I like it, but we still need to get brands involved, which you did. I need to now convince the brands to recognize that rugby is still a viable thing. But I need to also like prove that this this event works or this thing functions. And so it's just like this this constant cycle until you like yeah. you raise and learn and, and a lot of costs that go into it to get. To- <laughs> yeah, and, and you know you could you could send like a hundred emails and you know get get one back uh, one back and the one is saying no. So it's, exactly, uh, exactly. It's yeah, so so that I totally feel you on that. But it's it's something that you're gonna constantly like you know keep at it because you know brands also like you know just have you know a skeptical. Of new products, uh, of right. new sports, of new properties to get involved in. So it's 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 just a matter of keep, keep knocking and try and uh, reach like a rugby person in there and and, and see how they go. No, I I agree, I agree, and I think it's helped now. I I, I don't think it would have been as possible if I tried to do this, or, or to try and do this. Not even just me, but to try and do this. Uh, more at the beginning when I started versus now yeah. because one maturity of the game and then the other just there's you have the backup like there's there's a credibility that's been developed over time yeah. right yeah for you you know when you're now dealing with with the brand or dealing with the events um actually you know what let me actually reshape the question this way Developing your relationships. What was that process for you like? Because I know for me, it's been, I I honestly didn't realize I had relationships until the moment when I started needing relationships. So before it was just, hey, it's just people I just keep meeting around and hey, cool, this and that. But I don't really know. Sometimes I didn't even know what people did. Yeah, honestly, I just to a point, I still don't know what people do all the time. But it'll just be like, oh, wait, you have access to this? Yo, let me. Yo, okay, maybe you can help on this and go like that for you. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. but for you, yeah. like, how's that process been 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 proceeding in in developing those relationships and then uh, and, and finding that balance between business and and personal? So I think for me, it's um, it's just my personality. So I think relationships is my strength. I, I love people. I love interacting with people. Um, I like, I, I love good people, not just people. I love like Bad. where I see good, 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 where I see good people that are like-minded and that are doing good things. It's just that, that just hits home for me. So for me, it was uh, just a, a matter of just being myself and for people, for a lot of people to see my heart. And see that you know this guy is about this and he's genuine about it, right? And then you sort of develop the relationships that way. And for people to know that you're not just after something from them, you know, you you're there to add to add value. So in the context of business, um, I don't I don't really call uh, brand sponsors that that we work with because sponsorship kind of denotes like begging and asking for something right a donation, a donation and for me we're not it's not a donation we're not you know we're not there with a the begging bowl we are there at value so we are partners you know you give us the funding we're gonna give you like 
a, a ton of marketing mileage. We're going to help your business. Uh, we're going to heighten your brand visibility uh, through what we do. We're going to, um, you know, spread the message of that brand to our uh, uh, our our sector or our our segment um, or our 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 you know our fan base or our, t- uh, our class. So for for me, it's a partnership, and, and we we give them value. They they give us the funding, and everyone is happy. So if you look at it that way, you can o- you always make sure that the brand is happy. And the brand gets the return on investment from what they put in. And and that's 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 been the sort of the journey and and the and sort of the outlook on it. I love that because it, it's something that I had been feeling the same, and it's one of the things that I've had a really big issue with. Uh, how I, I'm again the rugby community kind of goes about funding because whenever you speak to the average team or the average union, it always is in the spoke of hey. Why don't we just go to the so and so brand and give them this packet, and then they give us money, and then we put stuff on our jerseys, and then it's like, uh, hey, it's all equal, and it's like, hey, guys, that, so that doesn't even make sense. Right. Y'all don't yeah. even got spectators. Like, why would this even add anything if you're not <laughs> facilitating it more? You know? <laughs> right, right, right. That's true. Totally true. Yeah. So it's it, it's it's going back to kind of what we were talking about, like the traditionalism. That's that's one of those big traditional elements that have always blown me, blown my mind um, on on that because the concept that you said is right, like partnership. There's a reason why it's a partnership. You know, yeah. it is an equitable transaction between two sides, being able to grow and gain uh, from both. One might be a funding partner. The other might be, you know, is is the product partner. The other might be X, Y, Z, yada, yada, yada. But it all works in uh, contribution to a single goal of lifting everybody's platform, right? Right. Let, let me throw something at you. Like, how 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 have um how so how how are you finding it? Because you're doing great work. Like I said before, when we're talking uh, before the show, I I'm a, I'm a huge fan of your work and. Like some of the stuff that you're putting out, especially uh, you know promoting uh, the historically black colleges and and the program that you guys have started there, how you know how 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 tough has those conversations been for you in terms of getting the buy-in from the brands? Because obviously you need a lot of funding to 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 do this show. You you know you're taking time out from spending with your family, you know, and then the other programs are just. You're trying to get get off the ground. Yeah, so it's been really interesting uh, in that. So for most of this HBC Rugby Classic has been self-funded, right? And when it came to – and this is where I get a little bit lost in it because I don't know – every region has a different characteristic with it. So in Louisiana, I had a lot of help from a ground-level standpoint in terms of, like, people – peaking interest, but yeah. not a lot of financial interest. That one right. was a different one to be able to present. And I, I don't know if it was because it was my own uh, lack of knowledge on how to present it, or it was a fact that, you know, a lot of it is people want to see you prove it first and then show. So I, I it has been, it has improved each year. Uh, the only one that was kind of Went a little bit backwards with 2021, but that's pandemic. You know, what did to say? I want to blame the pandemic. But 2019, I started, I saw an increase from 2018. Uh, and then at least the interest from an overall standpoint, 2021 and, and 2022, even though it didn't happen, started to develop yeah. better uh, uh, inclination, better um, uh, uh, interest in wanting to be involved. But again, it had to start with that, like, you have to prove it that it works as a concept. So I, I'm more happy that I had enough friends that were willing to do a lot, a lot of cheap to free labor <laughs> to make yeah, it yeah, happen. Yeah, I got you. Um, Thank God for friends, huh? <laughs> my goodness. Like, it goes back again. You don't know the relationships that you have until, like, you realize yeah. you need relationships. And then you're like, wait. 
Like you do like real stuff. Hold up, yeah. hold up. <laughs> but you know, it was like, oh, I can stop, you know, we can be, you know, messing around, just talking shit and <laughs> not doing yeah. anything. Right, right, right. Absolutely. But yeah, uh, it's 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 been a real journey. It's been a real journey. This year, I'm I'm very much excited because there's a lot of elements that are different, namely, obviously, location change, um, which yeah. is both I'm excited and I'm also a little sad because I wanted it for Louisiana, but I also realized that maybe you need to create a different platform because Baton Rouge is a little bit of a small town uh, in yeah. comparison. Yeah. So uh, even in just that, like saying DC versus Baton Rouge feels like it gets yeah. a whole different perception response to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the market counts. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so you know, what was your first event like? Whenever you your your first put together event like? Man, it was it didn't go as badly as it should have. Been. Uh thankfully, like I said, like you said, you know, I had a lot of people helping, uh, plugging the holes behind the scenes. So a lot of the people that came in were like, oh, what a wonderful event, right? Right. But that's because there's pe people behind the scenes that are plugging the holes and 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 just, you know, making sure that the, the, the train keeps moving. But there was a lot right. of things going wrong. There was a lot of things going wrong. You know, just this and that, you know, and obviously money is never enough. No, yeah. So but the first event was memorable. I was just happy when it was done, bro. Like <laughs> I just, I'm like, people should just leave now, you know, I just get done, over and done with, and people should just go, you know? Yes. So, so when it's, when it's done, I'm like, Phew, I can rest now, I can sleep. Uh, but it was good, man. It was good learning curve. Um, we had fun doing it. And then the subsequent ones afterwards where I can't say they were easier. I mean, the, the learnings, obviously, the learning journey got, got shorter. But, right. Yeah. Up events is never easy, so especially if they get big. So, uh, the, our first one was in 2014, and then 2016, we had uh, our first super rugby game that we hosted in Zim. Wow! So, that was the first super rugby game outside of the territories, uh, New Zealand, South Africa, Australia. That's so, nice. and you know, we had over 20,000 people in the stadium. Um, exactly. and, and it was expensive to put it up, but also at the same time, we didn't make a loss, which was good. Like the first thing we met. Cheers to that. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> so really, really, really grateful because, um, you know, we were in the black and, and things were, things just worked out. And thankfully, thank God. Everything came together, and uh, people attended, and and paid, and that that enabled us to to sort of cover the shortfalls and come up with with a decent sized profit. So, which was good. Man, that's really good. Like, I I, I always like that. I, I I love that. I I know from my first event, whenever I the first HBC rugby classic, the whole process was so stressful getting to yeah. it. Like, it it literally was down to the last second. I didn't make any money off of it. I just was like, yo, I need to pull off this event. My pride is on the line. <laughs> Meaning, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but I, I'm right. not gonna lie. Like after the event, like I think it was two days after the event, lost my eyesight for a week. I was yeah. the sky, the drop was went blind. Just I had to just like sit down and just do nothing because it was just like I'm, poof. Dude, Let me figure out life again. Events, dude, people people have no idea what these events do to you. When when was your first one? When 2018. was the Twenty eighteen. Okay. okay. So nice. yeah, it, it was it, it was well. I, I always say this though. After you do these events and, and do the whole process, and I want to know on your perspective, how much do you look at concerts and sporting events in a different light like 
when you talk about like watching the NFL or, you know, we watch one of these big concerts, whether it's like a Rolling Loud or, you know, any one of these, do you yeah. now see the game different? Do you see it differently than you did before you were uh, started doing sports marketing versus now? Or do you kind of like, oh, I was kind of always looking for that because it changed for me. I, I, I definitely. Yeah, it, it, it's changed the way I look at it. I if 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 an event is not put together uh, as I don't know as expected, yeah. I sympathize because I know the work that's going in. Yeah, and you know that's that's the man in the arena, right? So I don't <laughs> criticize Fast. as I did. Before. I I I know the struggle, so I appreciate what people are trying to do and the magnitude of the work that they're putting up. So, so yeah, definitely look at it differently now. Uh, and just when it's a well put like event, like how the NFL, the Super Bowl is a machine, like you just sort of like have a great appreciation of that and be like, you know, I just want to get to that, to that level. It's inspiring. Uh, but also at the that. same time, those that, are, yeah, yeah. And, and it just like spurs you on, but also at the same time, those that are on the entry level that are starting out and making mistakes and the event is, and I'm at an event and maybe I'm not getting my drinks on time or, or there's, there's a long line or there's, you know, I'm, I'm certainly more sympathetic because I know, you know, people are trying to do something on, and money is never enough. And, you know, uh, uh, you know, manpower is never enough. So, right. so I'm more appreciative of, of those facts. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 it was weird to me because the other part that kind of caught me was the accessibility of, of people. And, and what I mean by that is yeah. um, when I initially, like, I'll say before doing an event, like trying to get an artist, in my mind, I would think, oh, man, to get a, 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 a music artist, especially a mid-tier, high-end music artist, yo, you're spending hundreds of yeah. thousands of dollars to get them to do, you know, whatever moment. It's like, it's it's so far and wide above. But then I started doing it, and I was like, hold up. Yo, these people are really easy to get access to. Maybe more so now than before, but right now, really easy to get access. And then the cost... Yeah are not as high as I thought. Like, yeah. I'm thinking you're breaking ground. And and, and so kind of into that back, it changed the way even that I look at celebrity because now it's like I see well-known people, but now it's like the distance doesn't feel so, so big. You know, like you've yeah. done super rugby now. And, and you've done all these big events and you know how people react to what we call stars, you know? Yeah. But for you now, has your perspective on stars and the access points changed? Because now, I mean, you're there. I, I want to say, yeah, definitely. Um, and I want to say it's, it's probably a good and bad thing because yeah. now I got so used to be in those circles and I probably don't appreciate how elite those talents are or until people just mob us, maybe I'm with that person and people are like going crazy about them. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that, they're, they're a big deal. <laughs> there are something, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're a big deal, right? So, so I think because in my, my my philosophy is we, we always have to give people their dues, right? They right. if if someone has achieved something, you've got to you know they put in the work. You got to respect them. You got to they've earned your respect. They've earned you know all that you know all that um, that popularity that comes with it, all the the kudos or whatever it is. And 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 so I. To answer your question, yeah, that that definitely is the case now, especially with rugby players. Like, there's no one that'll come and I'm like a starstruck, you know, because I probably have worked with them right. um, uh, in one shape or another, or I've seen maybe bigger stars or 
and be, be been around them a lot. Uh, but that's not to minimize their talent. Uh, so I always try and remind myself, these guys are just, because I've also seen it firsthand how hard the work, the, they work and what what's what it's taken for them to reach like that level of eliteness, right? So, so yeah, it's it's to answer your question, I think that's inevitable. Um, human beings, we tend to be a, a little familiar if we get into those surroundings a lot. But I always try and remind myself that you know these 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 guys are special. You know, not not a lot of people can do what they do. So yeah, right. You know, keep it. That's that's real. I, I remember I remember for the 2019 Rugby World Cup and, and obviously having the media access passes to it was was nice. Were you there? Were you talking? I was. I'm, man, I did a whole trip. I was between Southeast Asia and then Japan. Like I was in Japan, but I was only in Japan for I was only there for the uh for the the what do you call it? The playing games. I didn't stay for the playoffs because by that point, I'd been in Asia for um, two months, and so I was like, "I just, I just let me just get these American games and just enjoy." But yeah. that was by far one of the best run events I've ever experienced in my life, and I think right. it's a cultural yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, I I had so much fun. It was probably the most intriguing country I've visited. Like everything yeah. is clean, everyone is clean, everyone is yes. polite. And uh, just the, the the way they supported the the teams that had nothing to do with Japan, like they what? just right adopted countries, like it was crazy, man. It was the energy, wild. Was, yeah. So I I I I enjoyed Japan. I mean, I did I did England in 2015. Yes, yeah. it was nothing compared to Japan in 2019. Um, I, it, Japan was special. It set a different standard because I, I mean, I, 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 it was my first rugby world cup, but I can tell the difference yeah. between whenever you're like on the bus and then you have just the volunteers, yo, waving you off and being like, hey, yo, and you got everybody so yeah. accessible. Yeah. Or the, like you talk about Dang. the fans adopting. I, I, we saw that at the Australia Wales game. And I'm like, yeah. hold up, you guys are Welsh or Australia fans? Like, wait, hold up. Why? <laughs> like, Dude, they, just, they just got into it. They just, they just got, got in. It was amazing, bro. I got so much great footage from that. That was that was dope. Like, I feel bad for this Paris one because you have a standard now that is set. Like, there's a reason why it made as much at money as that it did because Japan had a – that was a cultural standard. Though, yeah. yeah. But but you know what it is. Um, so I went to the best rugby game I've, I've been to, and I've been to many. Mm. Best rugby game I've been to was in March, uh, Grand Slam final, uh, England versus France in 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 Paris. Oh, good Bro, like the the level of where they produce the game from a fan engagement and was similar to how the NBA produces the NBA games. And for me, I was proud because, yes. you know, the crowd was getting involved in naming the team sheet. Uh, when the announcer or the stadium announcer would, would name the first name and then the crowd would name, I just said good, good bombs. And the crowd would just shout the last name. And the lighting was crazy because, you know, French people like to play rugby like late at night. The game right. kicked off at 9 p.m. Who does that? But yep. you know the the lighting, the ambiance was amazing, right? Oh. So I say that to say, I know Japan was like phenomenal, but I think France, like out of all, it's the gonna country, be a show. They they're gonna they're gonna put up a show. You know they're gonna that, put up a show. That's what play. I want. I love hearing, it. and you know what? It mm-hmm. doesn't surprise me that France is like that because of what they've done with the URC mm-hmm. and Pro Fourteen. Which I don't know why yeah. I feel like those that league does not get talked about enough on how progressively economical and entertaining it legitimately is, and it might just be because it's a language barrier because it's French. Yeah, but maybe 
Oh, you mean the top 14? Yeah, the top 14. Yeah, top 14, not pro 14. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal, I, like, phenomenally. And, and the pro D2, the pro D2 is equally as competitive. Amazing. Exactly. Like, I don't understand why that one's not copied more. Like, yeah. this is the, 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 the lack of copycat leagueness yeah. bothers me a lot in rugby because when you have something good like that, and you know it's entertaining. And this is literally what is working in almost every other sport. And yeah. it works even well, better, probably within rugby. Why not just continue to repeat that? Why is it only in isolated situations? You, sh- you shorten the learning journey. You're right. <laughs> just pick what's good and, 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 you know, implement that. Man. So I wanted to I, I didn't want to uh, get it too lost on on some of the other stuff, man. We're gonna look. We're gonna talk more in 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 after even this podcast and in the future because I mean, yeah, yeah. We, I, it's really relieving to be able to have a person who understands it fully back to back. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the Beast Foundation and ASTAT a little bit for you because you know I, I want, we promote here. All right. Press it, <laughs> our brother. <laughs> yeah. So first off, with the Beast Foundation, obviously the Beast Ten died. You know, freaking 2019 champion, uh, yeah. one, one of the best marketed right now rugby player between him, Maro. Yeah, yeah, no, that's about it. That's about it. That's all I'm calling it. Him, yeah, beat right. the Beast, and Maro right. Doji. Only ones right. that I feel are legitimately being marketed, ironically, both in association with Rock Nation. So right. it's like, it say something, say something. What? What? How did you first get involved with 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 Tendai, and and how did it lead to where you were being able to work on his nonprofit? Uh, so we we grew up together in Zimbabwe, played against each other since we were eleven. Yeah, um, and you know, we, we, we went to different schools that were rival rival rugby schools, so we had a little fun like trying to take each other out. He was playing night, uh, number eight then, and I would alternate between loose forward and 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 hooker. And in my last year of high school as a senior, I was uh, I was I was on the side of the scrum, so he would he was always bigger than everyone else. and he had these trademark pickups from the base. And I remember this one game, my coach said, don't do anything else. Your job is to make sure that peace does not go over the game line. So <laughs> from, from, from the eight man pickups. So you can imagine how, how long that afternoon was. But <laughs> so we've come a long way. Uh, he's uh, obviously... He, he was always special in the way he trained and his mindset. They were good players, really good players, some better than him in high school. And we all wanted to go pro, but right. maybe didn't actually believe we could. He did. His yeah. mentality was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be the best in the world. And, and he did that, albeit in a position he didn't think he was going to play. So... Uh, you know, fast forward to when he went to the Sharks, he played two, three years at the loose forwards, and then he moved to the front row, and then obviously made the spring box and, and all of that. So, so yeah, we've been we've been buddies for, for a while with business nice. partners, and uh, you know, when, when he retired, so before he, re- before he retired, when he was playing, we were doing some non-profit stuff through Cairo Sports, which, because we do a lot of Nonprofit stuff, yeah. And he would come to Zim maybe three times a, a year and we'll do stuff. So when he retired, we, we decided, hey, or he decided we're gonna form the Beast Foundation, formalize and give back because his journey is sort of unique. Um, in the sense that he went into he became the first black uh player in the Springbok uh team to to a consistent starter, right? The first black player to get 50 caps, first black player to reach 100, obviously. And, like, you just it's got so many records, right? Before that, I think black players used to get to, like, eight caps and eight appearances, and then they're out of the team because the environment wasn't always, like, easy for right. players of color. 
but because he was just mentally strong, he didn't care, bro. He just, you know, he had eye, eye on the price, you know. Yeah. Uh, tunnel vision, it always calls it, you know. Makes so, sense. I mean, you've been doing this since you're a kid, especially like in the concept of just being able to be like, yeah, let me, I'm, I'm going to get to the next level. Not, I yeah. hope to, not, I wish to, it's, it will happen. So whenever you've been doing that from birth, what is it whenever you're now there and it's like, I'm yeah. here. How am I not going to keep pushing this level more and more? Right, right. Because it's proved, right? So, so yeah, so that's that's how it started. And the BIS Foundation has been you know, remarkable. We are doing some exciting work that's on his heart, and my heart. It's something that we enjoy, um, genuinely enjoy, like just, you know, helping kids like navigate some of these decisions, not only in sport, like we're just using rugby as a tool. We're using yeah. basketball as a tool because we have basketball uh, boot camps in partnership with the FBA. We're using um, you know, education as a tool. We just we want to raise up the next, you know, the next leaders. Make make our people confident. Make our people uh, know that it doesn't matter what your background is. You can you can achieve anything. So no, I I love that, especially because in this era and. and I'm pushed whether rugby or not. Obviously, this is an era where you have the most probably freedom to create and monetize than any time yeah. in history. I don't I don't think that's even debatable. Um, yeah. you know, but a lot of it comes back to the concern of access. And you know, at least now, especially with the rise of cell phones, uh, because I know during that our, our wired telephone days, phone access was the absolute trashiest worst. But now that you see this like cell phone rise, and now the kids have the access, it, the kids are like, "Who am I acting?" The old person, everybody getting access into <laughs> an old man, bro. You just right? expose yourself. <laughs> I'm having to come into this realization. I'm like, oh, wait, this yeah. is this is the age that we, but it, you don't feel it. I, We'll right. talk about it later right. on the 30s on how yeah. this is a they've been lying to us on how old right. 30 feels. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, oh man. But like you know, you we have that, and it's being able to empower these kids to be able to yeah. like shift it up, especially since they're so much more digitally native than we are, even though you know we were half and half and we're pretty dope with it, but you know, they're more digitally native than we are, and it's letting them know you can do more than what's limited by your proximity yeah 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 oh, that's it man. that's yeah, it and i love it all right man and then i want to hear about astat because i have been seeing astat partnerships partnering popping up everywhere your influencer marketing has been on point because i was like who is astat and why where do they come from and how yeah. are they connecting with everybody until you right. told me that it was you not a clue I was just like, yo, all right, they they know the game. <laughs> I was like, these people know the game. Jump into this while it's still hot. <laughs> nah, <they're laughs> nah, nah, I appreciate the kind words, bro. It's behind the hood, it's a lot of pushing, a lot of hard work. Uh, but it's 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 phenomenal. It's been a two-year journey. Yeah. So I'm a co-founder with one of my partners who's based in DC. Um, and we we just met up at a rugby game, MLR game in 2020 at uh, Old Glory game. And he's he's also from Zimbabwe, but he has a really successful company that does analytics for the U.S. government. And nice. all of that. So he's like, hey, man, I, I, I have these tools, this infrastructure, I love sport. Why, why don't we combine and just, you know, do something magical, special? And and so we we have bootstrap startup pretty much self funded by him, me and um, me and my partner, right. and we we then COVID hit and then we just helped some of the uh, young young kids that had lost their internships because of COVID and we got them together and we started building out this tech uh, and we've been improving improving the tech and now it's like at a stage where. You know, we're ready to go to market and we've been in the market and now we're partnering with different sports properties. And it's not just rugby, we do a whole lot of other sports, lacrosse, football, soccer, um, field hockey, um, you know, basketball. We do anything. 
So, so yeah, so that's been the journey. It's exciting. Uh, we're building it out, uh, and you know, we want a whole lot more people to come and join the asset family. So, yeah, pretty exciting times. Has it felt different being in the tech space versus just in the the sports marketing? Because you know, it's it's obviously this is a field that's widening, and finding ways into it is is le- it, it, the barrier is lower but it is still one of the most it's the it's new wall street in a lot of senses so for you in this process has there been like a a a worry about how much goes into developing tech now as opposed to just events and marketing and sports because oh. yeah absolutely man like i i tell my team that i do not want to hear about coding it's too much in my head. Don't tell him. <laughs> don't talk to me about code. Don't, don't tell me about numbers. Don't tell me about code. You know, so my partner deals with the technical stuff. I deal with the marketing and the business development. That's more my Word. thing. Word. I do go, I know what's going on. I do attend the meetings and I, I look at it, just try and I'm like, no, man. Like it's 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 a lot of work that they do really like amazing intelligent like smart people right unfortunately it's not for me man it's not for me <laughs> so so we I'm all like, have our places right i'm right. right there with you i'm right, right there with you uh, there was right. once upon a time where my ego would be like yo i'm gonna go and sit down and do these numbers that ego died right. all right i'm right. like look man i am a communications yeah. guy <laughs> that's one thing they were right about the buddies right like you find your lane you stick to it <laughs> stick to facts that this is this is no yeah. truer statement has been said than that. <laughs> right. Absolutely. yeah no. so yeah so it, it's fun it's 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 a uh, it's it's uh it's fun seeing it grow and 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 we're looking forward to seeing where you know where it lands oh man i see a bright future for it especially as as it continues to delve into these emerging sports that are just popping more and more so now um, um, with everything considering. The set, uh, man, I, I, I want to tell you. Hmm? I said I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Yeah. But I, I want to tell you, A, I, I super appreciate you coming through, uh, just telling the story, uh, being able to do this. Like, it's it's been great. Uh, I want to ask, where can people find you? Find it, whether A Stat, Beast Foundation, Cairo Sports. Yo, drop them all so people know how to be able to utilize and access you, brother. <laughs> yeah. So Cairo Sports is at Cairo Sports. Two S's in the middle. So K Y R O S at Sports. And then the Beast Foundation is on Twitter is at Beast O R G Beast Org, and it's the Beast Foundation dot org on. The website and at stat is at stat.com. So, you know, and it's at at stat on all social platforms. But yeah, man, I appreciate you inviting me to uh, your space. The, you know, you communicate well. I wish I had your talent. Uh, but well, I wish I had you your talent. <laughs> but, thank, but hey, the good news we can match them and create. A big powerful thing, right, right, right. So, but is, but yeah, thank thank you for all you do, man. In the even even for uh, for our people um, and and for the game in general. So, uh, anything we can do to support that, just let us know. Absolutely the same. The feeling is one hundred percent mutual, brother. Thank you so much, and uh, I I can't wait to do a part two on this because I feel like there was so much more that we could have talked about that that I, I think does volumes. Another time, another time. We can't give them all at once. <laughs> no, no, you can't. No, you can't. Another time. But yeah, always up for it. Just hit me up. Kasechi, I want to thank you so much for just being willing to do this. Um, yo, this was a great conversation. Can't wait to do it again. And y'all, I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much. Please take the time to check out some of our other podcasts. We had Daniel Devalier of Howard Rugby last time. And then we talked to Diane Johnson as well, a uh, 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 youth health uh, um, guru. And we have so many other people that have been on here from Nia Tapper, 
Colby Melfi, Cheddar Amber, uh, Michael Feely, uh, uh, Toes on Tutu Tonway, uh, 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 Farrah Douglas, uh, Maria Thomas of, of, of Trinidad and Tobago. People all around the world, we want to be able to make sure that we are highlighting the opportunities taken advantage in all facets of, of this game, y'all. But I absolutely appreciate you guys, and I hope that you know that I hope that you are happy, that you are healthy, and most importantly, that you are highly favored. Until next time, cheers.